The chair recognizes the honorable member for Saint Anne's. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I rise on behalf of the great constituents of the Saint Anne's constituency today to provide my contribution to the matter of debate, which is the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museum Amendment Bill of 2023. Now, Mr. Deputy Speaker, listening to the members of the government side, I know better on some points than maybe the public do, but I give them full credit for giving consideration to the percentage, the cut that the Bahamian people, that the Bahamian government will receive from any discoveries of underwater cultural heritage artifacts, otherwise, or more properly known as treasure. Mr. Deputy Speaker, this bill today has been suggested to be doing something that hasn't been done before, uh, when in fact in 2011 under the last Ingram administration, that is when the provisions to the Antiquities, Monuments and Museums Amendment Act uh, came into effect, which included underwater, underwater cultural heritage. And this, this meant that from 2011 on, from the last Ingram FNM administration on, all traces of human existence having a cultural, historical, or archaeological character, which have been partially or totally underwater, periodically or continuously, for at least 50 years, and include sites, structures, buildings, artifacts, and human remains, together with their archaeological and natural context, as well as vessels, art, aircraft, other vehicles, or any part thereof, their cargo, or any other contents together with their archaeological and natural context, and then generally objects of prehistoric character. So it's great, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that as uh, governments have continued, we've worked together, uh, one party, now the other, to ensure that every aspect of what we would deem to be ours as, uh, as a nation, that we're protecting it so that it remains ours. Mr. Deputy Speaker, looking at the act itself, um, I give credit to the government for making it a 50%, but then I heard this uh, comment that they're looking out for the Bahamian people, putting Bahamians first. And that's what we all should be doing. And it's not too late, Mr. Deputy Speaker, we can make an amendment to this bill where if it's a foreign license holder, a foreign non-Bahamian entity, then their percentage is less than the percentage that a Bahamian license holder, a Bahamian entity, would receive. So if the maximum that we're willing to give to uh, Treasure Hunter is 50 percent, let the Bahamian vessel, let the Bahamian explorer receive 50 percent. And when the vessel is a foreign operation, let them receive maybe 35 or 40 percent, something that's not equivalent to what the Bahamian vessel, Bahamian discoverers would receive. Let's put Bahamians first in our written laws and not just in the words of our mouth. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I had the fortune in my youth, uh, one trip I was off of North Eleuthera, there's a number of historical wrecks throughout the Bahamas. I think there's reports of uh, a vessel off of Acklands being, being seen or uh, dove on multiple occasions. There may be treasure that's been discovered or sites that are suspected to contain treasure in the area of Walker's Key. Um, so we will be coming in with this legislation, hopefully to ensure uh, at least from this point forward, anything that's discovered is, unless we amend this so that Bahamians are actually favored over foreigners 50-50, uh, no matter who finds it. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, 
But what are we going to do when a piece of treasure surfaces? Because I don't think that we have regulations where every license holder must have a representative from the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museums Corporation or a government representative, maybe one from the Royal Bahamas Defense Force that's stationed on that vessel to report. If we don't have it, we should have it. But if we do, I think West Grand Bahama and Bimini is saying that we do, we should make sure that someone is there keeping an eye on what comes aboard. But there's still the chance that uh, the treasure we haven't seen before, there's still a chance that treasure that we haven't seen before will, will come out. I think the member for St. Barnabas was saying, We'll see, it on the, we'll see it on our television programs or uh, YouTube today, Discovery, where there's been treasure discovered. The ministry responsible, which I think is still the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture, or the Office of the Prime Minister, the ministry responsible should have a record of all treasures, all treasure that's been discovered in our Commonwealth, so that we know and the public knows that these are the items that have either come under a previous 10% license breakdown, because when the Ingram administration secured a automatic percentage right to treasure found in the country, uh, the percentage that the Bahamas was to receive was 25%. The license holder would receive 75%. And like in this amendment, in the past 2011 amendment, the Bahamas would have the right to choose which items in um, historic and national importance it would receive. So it had, it had the priority of choice on items that it were deemed it couldn't part with. Uh, but Mr. Deputy Speaker, what we should do is have a record of everything that has been reported to us, and then we should have a period, because treasure hunting internationally is becoming more and more of a contested market. As technology is improving, you have vessels that no longer are just sending divers down as deep as they can dive, whether free diving or scuba diving, but you have, you have the technology that is, that is uh, planning and surveying entire seabeds. So in 10 years, I would say, there's going to be a company. I know there's one that's involved with our carbon credits program. There's going to be a company that has spent a lot of money. But as a result of spending a lot of money, they're going to have an entire map of everything on our seabed. There isn't anything, as far as they're concerned, that the technology is not going to pick up, that's there. So whether it's the Bahamas government, whether it's the carbon credits crew, or whether it's foreign vessels, someone is going to know of every shipwreck, every location where treasure could be, and then it's just a matter of processing the license application and granting it and letting them go down there or not. Let's have that record under the Office of the Prime Minister of all treasure discoveries to date. And let's give a grace period where treasure hunters have to disclose if any of the treasures that they have in their possession or have granted to any historic uh, museum, uh, whether it's in the US or otherwise, where all treasure discoveries in the Bahamas, which we don't have a record of, have a grace period of a year or two years to disclose those findings with the office of the prime minister. From that point on, after that one-year grace period or that two-year grace period, we will now know that anything which comes either to the surface through the Discovery Channel, through YouTube, or through uh, TikTok, whatever it may be, if, it, if, it, if we can show that it came from the Bahamas, we know that we're owed money on those items, and we know that we're entitled to confiscate items that have been removed for the country or have been uh, removed without license and without the Bahamas government taking its point measure, which is a component of the legislation 
or its preferred items, which are of great historical significance that it cannot part with. Mr. Deputy Speaker, the second you find a billion dollar bounty of treasure in Bahamian waters, you're going to have all the colonial uh, master countries coming down and saying these are our items. You've seen it with Spain. I think there was uh, something in the news last year in 2022 where persons were saying that Spain was going to be claiming treasure from some of its vessels that never made it back to Queen Isabella and others. Now, I don't support that at all. I don't, I don't support that at all. And I don't, support, I don't support us just passing this legislation and saying we've moved it from 25% for the Bahamas government to 50%, jobs done. I think that what we need to be doing is coming with a supporting bill, whether it's a um, foreign nation claim tax bill. So if any, if any foreign nation comes and tries to say, well, actually, that treasure belongs to our nation, we want it. If it comes out of the Bahamas, that's ours. If they end up with it over us, then we need to be compensated to an equivalent value. So we, we should have we should have such legislation in place. And uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I hope, uh, I hope you'll be in support of, uh, of that idea, ensuring that, it's, that it is uh, in place, or if it's already in place, that it's, that it's strengthened. Because as I said, as technology improves, the likelihood of finding these lost vessels, the likelihood of finding these lost treasures is going to increase. And we don't need to be a day late to that billion dollar party. We need to be putting that money in our own treasury and not taking it out. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it was a, a pleasure today to read the editorial of the Nassau Guardian where, where uh, recognition was being given to the accomplishments of the last administration, particularly, particularly the Nassau cruise port, which will be having its grand opening next week, Friday. Nassau Harbor, you know, Nassau became the capital of the Bahamas because of that harbor out there. Nassau cruise port is making it the top cruise destination in the world for large cruise ships in the region. And that is only one part of the incredible history of this Nassau Harbor. The number of pirate ships that must have come through with those same uh, treasure cargoes. You got Fort Charlotte out there to protect uh, the bay from Spaniards who eventually kicked back to Cuba, rolled out, as we would say. You got Fort Montague. So both ends of the harbor were protected with cannon fire to deter not only invading countries from trying to take the Bahamas, but also to keep pirates out so that they wouldn't harass and steal from the residents here at different times in our history. But Mr. Deputy Speaker, since we're talking about the, an amendment to the um, Antiquities, Monuments and Museum bill, we have to give attention to the heritage sites which currently come under the Antiquities, Monuments and Museums Corporation. And there was a spread in the national news for The Guardian today where it highlighted Collins House, it highlighted the Water Tower, it highlighted Fort Charlotte and Fort Fincastle. These are the well-known sites. Uh, they are well-known because they, we all know that they exist and they've been here for years. And uh, very few of us, with the exception of Collins House and the Water Tower, because I'm not familiar with the dates that, they, that com construction was completed, very few of us had anything to do with their, their actual construction. And unfortunately, Mr. Deputy Speaker, it looks like very few of us have any concern with their actual maintenance. Uh, Collins House, Mr. Deputy Speaker, which is right in the center of town. It sits 
uh, directly between our two major hospitals, Princess Margaret Hospital and Dockers Hospital. It was once the site that St. Andrew's School was located on. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, while we try to have egg hunts there right now, I don't think that we would ever let our children run about the building in those egg hunts. But, th but, but that, is a, that is a national historic site, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, Fort Charlotte and Fort Fincastle, the same. Mr. Deputy Speaker, there's also a fort that, um, knowing, knowing one of the members of parliament are not in the House right now, I would ask whether anybody in this House of Assembly currently now knows where the Fort Winton Battery is located. Whether if you could drive from this Honorable House of Assembly and take the sergeant in the vehicle to the Fort Winton Battery. Now that's a historical site. That, that's a historical site that should be protected. I know where it is, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and admittedly I know where it is because it's in my constituency. I know where just about everything is in my constituency, Mr. Deputy Speaker. But I also know, I also know, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that the Fort Winton battery is overgrown. Mr. Deputy Speaker, you, you, can't, you can't access the Fort Winton battery right now. Yeah, you can't access the Fort Winton battery right now. Yeah, the constituency allowance could clean it. Um, the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museums Corporation could sign it over to the St. Anne's constituency. Or if you want to keep it, then maintain it, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, this is, this is one of our historical sites. So if we're going to be looking at making amendments to the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museums bill, let's include all aspects that come under the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museums Corporation in this debate. Otherwise, this is a two-minute debate. I support the rate of Treasury recovered percentage for the Bahamian government going from 25 to 50 percent, and I'll sit down. But we have 30 minutes, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and we're here to do the people's work. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, approximately 10 years ago, there, was, there were two individuals that were trying to claim the land that the Fort Winton Battery was located on. Um, eventually, they cleared it off multiple times using heavy equipment. Some damage was done to the site. I don't recall it being reported in the paper, but some damage was done to the site and a historic cannon. Now these cannons, they have different sizes. You can see the ones as we drive down uh, West Bay Street just there in front of Fort Charlotte on the roadside, which, which looked like if you got hit by one of those, you would, you would toast, but it may not take out a ship. This was one of those larger ones. That, uh, that would have taken out large ships. And we had a, a massive scrap metal business going on at the time, and the individuals that were claiming that site as their own land, um, falsely claiming it, in my opinion, uh, well, as was proven later, because they weren't even at the right location. Um, they, they were known to have removed that cannon from that site, and it's not been seen since. I don't know uh, if it was ever sell, sent out for scrap, uh, must, have, must have fetched a handsome sum. I suspect it's still here in our uh, capital, and it would be great if Antiquities, Monuments, and Museums Corporation would at least ask the Royal Bahamas Police Force to make some inquiries with those individuals whose names I can give, give uh, Antiquities, Monuments, and Museums Corporation. It's likely sitting, in my opinion, on, on a piece of property belonging to them somewhere here in the capital. But all of, our, all of our sites can be um, maintained and redeveloped. You look at the Nassau cruise port, the Bahamas government has gone into an operation of 50-50 with a, with a private-public partnership arrangement there. You look at Sir Linden Pindling International Airport, which is also done by the Free National Movement Administration. The government's gone into a 50-50 private-public partnership there. Success. Success, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Success, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Success, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Some people are sour, Mr. Deputy Speaker, but I'm, I'm a Bahamian. I'm filled with pride. I'm no sour lime in this great honorable house, Mr. Deputy Speaker. 
<laughs> Mr. Mr. Deputy Speaker, you also have a great. Just, just, just don't say anything at all, please. I'm trying to get my contribution. Mr. Deputy Speaker, you also have the road improvement project, which was done by an FNM administration. Mr. Deputy Speaker, <laughs> Mr. Deputy Speaker, part two. you have you have part two. what you have what was what was previously called a dump site. <laughs> you, we don't know for what we had over there. We don't. You have what was previously called the dump site, which is now termed an ecological park. That was that was cured by the last Minnes Free National Movement administration. In each of those examples, now when I say each, Linden Pinling International Airport, the Linden Pinling International Airport, the Nassau Cruise Port, the Ecological Park, all of those sites became public-private partnerships. And they're all, as far as the majority of Bahamians are concerned, they're all successful projects. They're all successful projects, Mr. Deputy Speaker. That model, that model has thus far proven to be successful for the Bahamian people. Mr. Deputy Speaker, unless a government member is going to today, in their contribution, talk about how our historical sites under the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museum Corporation body is going to maintain these sites, then, then we should be hearing from them on what the plan is. Because getting 50% of treasure is good. Ensuring Bahamian discovery vessels, Bahamian licensed vessels, we're getting a bigger portion than foreign vessels, that would be better. But what we can begin to focus on, Mr. Deputy Speaker, rather than patting ourselves on the back too much with a protection that was put in pace, place in 2011, is saying to the Bahamian people how we're going to make you proud. How we're going to make you proud in this 50th, 50th year of our independence. How we're going to make you proud of your Bahamas. Now, I have my my pride pin on today, my 50th, 50th uh, anniversary pin on today. I'm proud, I'm proud of our country, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I would like all Bahamians, Mr. Deputy Speaker, before this administration leaves office to be proud of our historical <laughs> sites. Whatever administration is in place, you have the ability to do it now. You have a new budget coming up now whether you have accounted for the money in the new budget or whether you're going to acknowledge that these public-private partnerships on certain matters of historical value where the government really has to put no money up are successful private, are successful models, then if you haven't accounted for the money in the upcoming budget, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I think that this government should strongly consider a private-public partnership for our historical and national heritage sites. Mr. Deputy Speaker, with that being said, I'm going to conclude with a uh, vote of thanks. Unfortunately, the good minister is not here right now, but the Honorable Member Vaughn Miller, he assisted through the Ministry of Environment under his portfolio with bulk waste cleanup in the St. Anne's constituency. That was a very successful event. Uh, the gentleman from the Ministry of Environment, Mr. Marinard, who I know uh, because he also oversees the contractors that have the waste collection contracts, the um, twice weekly waste collection contracts in the constituency. He was helpful. The constituency office uh, worked in conjunction with different neighborhood associations. There were persons that had uh, a heavy equipment vehicle and a small crew. So if you had put your waste out on the road, your bulk waste out on the road, you could send the MP your pin location and he would forward it on to the collector. Or you could send your um, pin location where you put your bulk waste on the roadside verge to your neighborhood association captain and they would send it on to the collector. All around, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that exercise for St. Anne's was uh, a success. 
And um, I'm very thankful to the Ministry of Environment team, as well as Minister Vaughan Miller. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, another, another MP from the government side, the Executive Director of Parks and Beaches, there was uh, a, a large collection of um, waste that had been abandoned at the Fort Montague foreshore. Now, the Fort Montague foreshore is basically between Family Guardian or the fish ramp and Dix Point. And that's, in, that's in my constituency. Everything, including the public dock, is my constituency, um, Exuma and Ragged Island. And uh, what happened at the Montague foreshore was a homeless gentleman, clearly somebody that had some uh, mental health issues, had, um, as I described to a constituent, decided that he was going to move out of his winter home, which was in the bush behind Family Guardian. Uh, he lay out all of his items, almost took an entire field, but then he moved to his summer location, which was on a park bench in Montague foreshore, and basically took it over and made it into a homeless camp overnight. Uh, the police, Royal Bahamas uh, Police Force at Fox Hill, they spoke with the gentleman, and I think he was uh, removed and taken to get the proper assistance that he needed, and all of his items were, were stacked, and he abandoned them, but they were left on the, on the foreshore area along the road. And I uh, messaged the executive director over the weekend, and uh, Monday morning, those yellow, uh, offensive yellow, but those yellow uh, waste collection bags were along the foreshore. All items were being collected. The foreshore got us, got us, got us, got us, got us, got us sprucing up. Um, so it's unfortunate that, you know, members of parliament have to ask different government departments to perform functions under their purview. Uh, but it is, it is an easy job for a member of parliament to be the go-between between the constituent that's noticed something that nobody else has and the department that can rectify it. And then you see, you see the department uh, working to rectify it. Um, I still can't get some coconut vendors removed from the Montague foreshore for constituents, uh, but we're going we're gonna to continue to work on that as well. And um, I know that the member for Fort Charlotte and I don't always see eye to eye on everything in the House, Mr. Deputy Speaker. We have different, we have different backgrounds, but Mr. Deputy Speaker, he's spoken about it. He's spoken about it. The member, the member for, for Pinewood has spoken about it. And I've spoken about it in the House, and that's McPherson's Bend. Um, that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful location for all Bahamians in the capital to enjoy when you come along Prince Charles Drive and head, uh, head to the end of the road and into that large bay. It's uh, shallow water when the tide's high. It's great for, for family um, bathing in the sea, for just splashing about with young children with the water wings on, for elderly persons. Uh, to get that good salt um, in their sinus passages, as well as to exercise, do some physiotherapy in the water there. But the former member of parliament, Brent Simonet, he had uh, submitted plans to the Ministry of Works that made it all the way to the Department of Physical Planning um, for the beautification, as well as uh, parking area, to, to, make that, to make that location uh, right along the foreshore a, a park that everybody could enjoy. And uh, I think that if the Ministry of Works uh, could look into it, um, maybe the Office of the Prime Minister can, can look at acquiring the uh, parcel of land that's to the south of the bay itself, which is where a lot of vehicles park um, when, they're, when they're using the bay, to acquire that by eminent domain for the benefit of all, of all Bahamians so that um, if it's privately owned currently, it can become national public land and the use that's being made of it can become an official, official use, a nice parking bay there. Uh, we, have, we have a great location in the St. Anne's constituency. I know um, as a member of parliament, I'm going to be working to ensure the property values go back up, that we realize the East, the east is the best place to live. And uh, while God is not making any more land, we can definitely have a plan to make the best of what he's given us. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Member. As many.